Thank you so much, thank you so much. That is from a popular song called 24 Karat Magic, sang by Bruno Mars. And those of you that know that song, you probably were thinking like, man, he did that with a computer, right? Y'all were thinking that, right? It wasn't a computer, it was me, Mr. Talkbox. <laughs> the reason my stage name is Mr. Talkbox is because I play this instrument called the talk box. And let me tell you what the talk box is. It's basically a speaker and an amplifier housed in a little box with an opening for a tube to be inserted onto the speaker. And the purpose of the tube, what the tube does is it allows a musician to make their instrument of their choice, which mine is this little keyboard, the sound wave of it, you could turn it into words. And it sounds like this. Hello, TEDx. Are you ready to go to the next level? Say yeah. yeah. Come on and say yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the talk box works, OK? Now, it, it takes a lot of time and practice to master it, and it really does. It takes a lot of time to master it. And um, I've been doing it so long, I try to make it look easy, all right? So let me show y'all how I do it. Now y'all groove with me, all right? Y'all gonna groove with me, groove with me. Here we go. There is something that I'm gonna try to explain. I'm gonna need a minute. Clap your hands. I'm gonna need a minute. Boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna need a minute. Boom, boom. I'm gonna need a minute. Boom, boom, boom. Feel so good. Boom, boom, boom. Feel so good. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Feel so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, oh, boom. That's it. <laughs> And the cool thing I love about this instrument, you know, it grabs your attention. And, you know, if you do it and you do it right, it actually will command your attention. One of the things that I love about it also is that, you know, people don't expect it. You know, they see it and it's like, whoa. But it's a cool thing because once it grabs your attention, it takes a special individual to bring it to life. Uh, one of the greatest comments that I get is that this instrument brings me joy when I hear it. You know, I, I, I love the way it sounds, but it's not just the instrument alone that does that. It's the actual spirit of the musician. Miles Davis, which is a famous uh, jazz trumpet player, he said it like this, he said it best. He said, anybody can play an instrument. That's about 20% of it. But it's about 80% of the spirit of the musician that shines through. As you can see, I'm a joyous type guy, you know, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> and I love to have a good time. And when people tend to hear me play the talk box, that's what they feel. Being that I'm that guy, being that I'm a joyous guy, it doesn't mean that I haven't had my share of uh, life's hardships. I remember back in 2008, I went through a gripping depression. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, uh, I lost a ton of weight, but I grew up in the church, and uh, you know, don't worry, I'm not going to preach to you, and I'm not going to pass off from play, just, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I read the Bible, and I believed what it was saying, and there's one scripture in particular in the book of Deuteronomy, 31, uh, chapter 31, verse 6, and it says this, and I'm paraphrasing, God will never leave you nor forsake you. So I held on to that scripture and a whole lot of other scriptures in that Bible. And eventually, I came out of that depression. And what I learned when I came out of that depression to appreciate the joy 
and the contagious, joyous spirit that I had. I also learned that it's a blessing to be able to have joy and to be able to give joy to others. And lastly, another thing that I learned, being a musician and having skill alone wasn't the key to my success. It was who I was as a person. There's a, a band that I used to play for. I played second keyboards in 1999 by the name of NSYNC. I toured with them for about a year, and I felt like my time with them was coming to an end. And so I announced that to the band. I told them that I was going to be stepping down. And I remember I had one more show with them, and I will never forget this. We were in New York City. We, had, we completely shut down Times Square, and we were about to play MTV's TRL. And before we went on stage, one of the guys from NSYNC came up to me, he put his hands on my shoulder, and he said, hey, are you sure you're ready to leave this band? We actually like having you a part of this band. We love what you bring. We love your spirit. Of course, that made it hard for me. <laughs> but I had to move forward with the plan. And I tell you that story just to tell you that it wasn't just my talent. It wasn't my skill that kept me in that band. But it was who I was as a person. And it was the joy that I carry. Fast forward to 2009. My family and I, we, we're from Orlando, Florida, and we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. And when we got to Nashville, Tennessee, I got a call from a popular Christian artist. His name is Toby Mack. And Toby Mack infuses hip hop, pop, R&B, and rock. I knew those first three genres. I knew how to play those, but rock? I was a little shaky about that. So we, I go there and we, we do our first rehearsal. Now, now, granted, I play every instrument. I play drums, I play bass, I play guitar, uh, lead guitar, I play keys, and obviously this thing right here. <laughs> and so in the band, my role was going to be keys and guitar and some talk box. And so first rehearsal came, and they asked me to play a rock song. And I was like, all right. And so I started playing, and it was like, it didn't work out too well. <laughs> but through all of that, I had a joyous, I still had a joyous attitude. Even through the mistakes, I was still happy. I was still willing to learn. I was teachable. And Toby Mac loved that about me. And you fast forward, I toured with that band for five years. And it was a very successful run for me with them. Even within my solo career, those same principles was in my mindset. And when it came time for me to choose my band, I always look for likability. I always look for attitude. I always look to see if the person was, was joyous and also if they had a good heart. Then I look for the talent. In 2003, when I first started doing Mr. Talkbox, I had those principles in mind. My team and I, we started looking for band members. And lo and behold, we found them. We looked for those qualities, and the rest is history. They were, it was a great band. And so, as you could see, in my life, I've had so many choices that I had to make in my life, in my music career, as a solo artist, and being in someone's band. I had to make a choice, and I chose joy, I chose to be likable, and I chose love. So some of y'all are probably wondering, hey man, like, how do I get that? I'm kind of opposite of you. I don't want, that's not who I am. Well, I want to tell you this. Everything that you do, do it from the place of love, and that joy will automatically come. Okay? And so that's basically how self-branding and marketing comes to life. Thank you. <laughs>